lesson is deprecated. That means it will no longer be supported. It's only here for legacy support. If you're using Ubuntu 20.04 or newer, please use the previous lesson as your guide for configuring SSH. If you're using 18.04 or earlier, then you would use this lesson. But please consider upgrading and using Ubuntu 20.04. Now that we have key-based authentication for SSH configured and tested, we can harden our SSH configuration. This is done in the etsy ssh sshd underscore config file. So just to start us off from scratch, if you're in your home directory, you navigate to etc ssh. can see one of the files in there is sshd underscore config. This is the file that's used to configure the SSH daemon. The SSH daemon, when it starts, will read this file and configure itself according to the settings in that file. It'll then listen for incoming connections on SSH by default on port 22. Here are the things we'll do or check to harden SSH. Remember, SSH uses port 22 by default. I'm going to show you where that's set and how you can change it, if you want to. We're going to make sure that the protocol is set to version 2. Versions prior to 2 are insecure. We'll disable root remote access, so root will not be able to log in with SSH. We'll disable challenge response authentication and we'll disable password authentication. So the only way you'll be able to log on to your device remotely is with uh, keys, key-based authentication. So back in the SSH directory, because this is a system configuration file, we're gonna make a copy of it before editing. First, it's good to take a look and see if you have other copies already saved. We don't have an sshd underscore config dot zero, so we'll make one. If you did have a dot zero or dot one or dot two, you would just increment, increment to the next number. So we'll cp sshd config to sshd config dot zero. Oh, we have to do that as sudo, sorry. And we have our copy. This is the original, the dot zero. Now we'll go ahead and edit the file. You have to use sudo to edit this file. The file isn't that long, so we can just scroll through and look for what we need. That's it. But uh, if you wanted to, you could just type a forward slash and search for words as well. We're gonna go back up to the top and just do this manually. By default, SSH listens on port 22. I'm personally not a big fan of security through obscurity, and we're going to lock down port 22 so it will be secure. But if you want to weed out some of the bad traffic you'll get on this port with people trying to log in randomly, you could change it to another port. To do that, all you would do is change it to the number you want, save, and restart the SSH protocol. You'd also have to change your firewall to allow the new port. And you'd have to specify that new port on any clients you want to connect with. So if I wanted to connect to Theo with the user Theo to 192.168.254.105 and I wanted to do a different port, I'd have to put a minus P and then the new port number. And then it would connect. And if you wanted to do that with Windows, with PuTTY, you would just put your new port in the port window. And you could also save that with your session so it comes up with the right port every time you want to connect. I'm going to go ahead and leave that at port 22. Just remember, if you do want to change it, you'll have to change your firewall settings, and you also have to connect to the new port on your clients. The next thing we want to check on is the protocol number. Make sure only number two is specified here. 
Older versions of SSH have security flaws that have been fixed in version 2. We want to explicitly only allow version 2. Next thing we'll do is disable root login over SSH. So on my file, it says prohibit password. We're going to remove that and just say no. You also want to make sure challenge response authentication is explicitly set to no. If this were set to yes, PAM or pluggable authentication modules could allow login over password even if you set password authentication to no here. We're going to show you, I'm going to show you that next. So if we uncomment password authentication and explicitly set this to no, password authentication will not work. However, that could be overridden by PAM if this is enabled. So we want both of these set to no. One thing you won't see here is anything about maximum login attempts. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom of the file, we can see that it says use PAM and that's set to yes. PAM, as I mentioned a moment ago, moment ago stands for pluggable authentication modules. And it's used to control how things log in, not just with SSH, but also with SSH. I just wanted you to know why it's not addressed here. We're disabling password authentication completely, so it's really not relevant for SSH. But I want you to know why it's not spelled out here, but it still works. In a future lesson, we're going to install something called fail to ban fail to ban is a free open source application that watches for malicious activity like failed login attempts and blocks the IP addresses sending such requests. It can be used to protect many services, but we're going to configure it for SSH. So once we're done here, we, we uh, save our changes. So it's escape colon WQ. We can look at the difference between sshd config and sshd config.0. And we can see that permit root login used to be prohibit password, now it's set to no. And password authentication has been uncommented and explicitly set to no. Well, these changes haven't taken effect yet. We have to restart SSH to make them take effect. To do that, it's just service sudo service ssh restart. Now while we're still logged in on this session, we want now while we're still logged in on this session, we want to try and connect from another server and make sure everything is working. And we're in, so we make sure sudo works. And we're good. So everything works. 